Canada is a dream country and a land of opportunities. But many people do leave Canada as well. And a recent survey has shown that around 30% new Canadians wants to move out of Canada in the next two years. Of course, we are talking about almost one third of the new immigrants. That's a big number. So why Canada is not able to live up to the expectations of the new Canadians, new immigrants? Of course, there cannot be one or two reasons. There are a bunch of reasons and we'll discuss most of them in this video. Stay tuned. Okay guys, through this video, I don't want to demotivate anyone. I know as more and more PPRs are being issued, the backlog is being cleared. More and more people would be coming to Canada in the upcoming months, especially because all the restrictions are being eased out, summers are approaching, so more and more people would be coming. And I want you to have the right mindset, right expectations, so that you don't get disappointed and you are not one of them who wants to leave Canada soon after maybe spending a couple of years over here. Okay, talking about the very first point, why do new Canadians want to leave Canada? So the biggest point is actually about the cost of living. Now, of course, since the pandemic began, we have seen inflation go up. There was a recession because of the lockdowns, restrictions, the supply chain got broken for a lot of stuff. And of course, we have seen the cost of living go up almost around the world and Canada is no exception. But when you're here in Canada, of course, when you have to pay high taxes, uh, the cost of living is also high. Now, recently, because of the Russia-Ukraine war, we've seen the gas prices to go very, very high. Also, towards the start of the pandemic, we saw that as more and more people were moving out of the Toronto uh, area and Vancouver area to the uh, remote locations to work remotely, the prices for rent were going down, but recently we have seen the surge in prices, uh, in rent prices as well. And apart from that, the housing, housing in Canada is insane, especially in Ontario. So if someone got their house in 2018 or 19, in just three, four years time, the prices have more than doubled. So it's getting impossible for the new Canadians to buy a house, especially in Ontario around GTA. It is almost impossible for anyone who is even having uh, an annual package in six figures, let's say 110,000, 120,000. If you don't have uh, a down payment in uh, you know hundreds of thousands, you cannot afford to buy a house. And also on a day-to-day -day basis, even if I go for grocery, I have realized that pinch of extra payment that I have to make Earlier, the stuff that I was able to get in $100, now I have to pay $150 for that, or maybe $130, $140. And I can re actually realize it that, okay, the inflation is actually affecting it. And when I am here, I am still like uh, almost five years old in Canada, uh, but all the new Canadians who have been here for one year, two years, they even haven't uh, settled properly. And if they have to pay more, they might have to pay more from their savings. So of course, cost of living is one of the biggest reasons not just new Canadians, of course, all the people who are here are actually feeling that pinch. But of course, for the new immigrants, it is even more difficult to handle the rising prices of almost everything here in Canada. So that is one of the biggest reasons. So of course, all the people who are coming to Canada or maybe planning to come uh, somewhere in mid of 2022 or onwards, you should definitely have much more savings. Uh, probably 20-25% more savings because your expenses are gonna go higher for sure. Okay, the next point is about immigration. Let's say that uh, somebody is here on a work permit. There are a lot of people, thousands and thousands of people who are working on a work permit or working on a PGWP, working as a uh, you know student right now and want to get the PGWP. So all of them have seen a lot of struggles in the past two years to get the PR. Of course, when you come to Canada, most of us have that uh, mindset that you want to settle here and Canadian government also wants you to do that. But in the last uh, couple of years, because of COVID, the pandemic, uh, we've seen a lot of backlogs and even a lot of people who are working in the workforce 
they're running out of status because of the delays uh, in the processing times and of course Canada hasn't been conducting the, even the CEC draws so lot many people are actually stressed out because of that fact what will happen if uh, you know they actually get out of status it's not easy for everyone to convince their organization their managers to extend their work permit as well so it is getting increasingly difficult for uh, the new immigrants especially who are there on a work permit or maybe on a student visa to find a PR pathway for themselves. However, the Canadian government is claiming that, uh, you know, they're speeding up the process and in the past few months they have done that. But because of the high processing times, it's very difficult for people to hang in there. And of course, this demotivates you. You stress about it a lot. And of course, when you, when you don't feel confident about, you know, staying for long term in a country, you of course want to leave. A lot of us actually want stability in life and if we don't get, if there's confusion or visa issues, if you're uh, over your permanent residency status, then a lot of us actually choose to go for different options. So that is another big reason why a lot of Canadians have actually are actually choosing to uh, you know move out of Canada in the next couple of years. And this has changed recently, only in the last couple of years. Okay, before I proceed further, I want to thank Borrowell for sponsoring this video. They are a leading fintech organization recognized in Canada and globally as well, interested by more than a million customers. If you sign up with them for free, then not only you can get to know about your credit score once, but regularly. You can get free weekly credit score and report monitoring service, bank level security, and personalized financial product recommendations. A great thing about checking your credit score with Borrowell is that it is a soft inquiry and it would not affect your credit score. So I'll provide a link in the description box below. You can click that link, sign up with them and monitor your credit score regularly. Okay, the next point is about the harsh cold weather. Now of course you would say that anybody who is moving to Canada would definitely be prepared that uh, Canada is famous for its harsh and cold weather totally fine I accept your point then you would also say that uh, you know uh, we, wherever we go out even the homes are insulated all the shopping malls wherever you go in winters is uh, you know is properly heated insulated so we should not face all those kinds of problems I totally accept all those points but in the last two three winters or rather two and a half winters what has happened is that these COVID waves have peaked around the winter season so it started somewhere in uh, February or March of 2020. Then of course, 21 winters, 22 winters. Most of these winter months we've spent under a lockdown. First of all, uh, there's a lockdown, so you cannot go to places like shopping malls, movie theaters, and all the indoor uh, recreational activities. And apart from that, you also can't step out because of the harsh weather. So you can't go to the gym, uh, you can't go for a walk, so it becomes very depressing. When we talk about the harsh weather, you would think about bearing the cold weather, but we don't think about what effect it does have in our, on our mindset. And having lived for around five winters now in Canada, I totally understand what happens during those five, six months. Now we are in April and I totally understand how frustrated everyone feels when we see a cold day, even in April or maybe in May. So it gets very, very frustrating. And of course, if in that weather, you can't even go to, uh, you know, any shopping malls, any gyms, any uh, movie theater, anywhere apart from grocery stores, it becomes way more frustrating and very depressing for people. So depression is also one of the main reasons. Uh, of course, the uh, native Canadians or maybe all those uh, immigrants who have been living here for long, let's say five um, or maybe 10 years, you know, all those uh, people have been quite habitual of uh, all of these things and also a lot of people actually go out for skiing or some winter fun activities but not everyone uh, can actually do that you also know about uh, the work from home so people are not even able to go to work uh, during these times not even to meet anyone so that is another reason why many people especially the new Canadians the new immigrants want to move out of Canada because of that frustration of three, four, five months of harsh weather when they have to stay inside. Okay, the next point is about the health infrastructure. Of course, 
pandemic has actually exposed the health infrastructure of almost every country, every city. And there isn't any country probably who can say that they handled uh, the pandemic so well that they didn't run out of beds, didn't run out of uh, you know man manpower. It is free of cost for the permanent residents and citizens. So you would always hear all the time that uh, you know, the healthcare is top notch. No doubt there's top notch, no doubt is, uh, you know, free of cost, but there are a lot of loopholes and the Canadian health infrastructure is not at all good. Why? Because of course of the lack of infrastructure. Now, of course, everyone needs access to good healthcare, but with the speed that the uh, Canadian immigrants are actually growing. The health infrastructure is not at all growing with that pace. Now, of course, towards the start of the pandemic, we saw that the healthcare infrastructure, the workforce, the manpower actually could not make up with the demand. But even two years down the line, it is very disappointing. Can you believe that a city like Toronto did not even have one ambulance for any medical emergency available someday in January? And apart from that also, there were a few hospitals that declared that they don't have enough staff to take care of the COVID patients. Now you can say that almost every country actually struggled uh, with these issues. But apart from that, if you even uh, have some problem, some, uh, you need some emergency medical treatment, you go to the emergency wards, you actually have to wait there for five to six hours. And that's a general time that you should definitely expect. I was there when my uh, wife actually broke her hand. We were waiting there for five and a half hours when finally the doctor called her. And trust me, this was not because of the pandemic. Four years before, when I just came to Canada, one of my friend was having a stomach pain, probably a kidney stone or something. We were waiting in the, uh, in the emergency ward for almost six and a half hours. And he was just given a painkiller because he was not dying. Priority was given to other people, somebody who uh, met with an accident. I've seen people who are bleeding, who are waiting in the uh, emergency ward, just given a band, uh, bandage, but they were waiting to uh, see the doctor. So the health infrastructure basically is not at all good. And many people who wanted to you know, come to Canada because of great health infrastructure, they would have heard that it's free. Everything that is free does not mean that, uh, you know, you have access to it. When you are actually waiting uh, for that long, you actually feel that, you know, you're willing to pay even if you get urgent treatment. So that is also certainly one of the factors why the new immigrants want to leave Canada. Okay, the next point. Unfair job opportunities and lesser salary than other immigrants or Canadians. So what do I mean by unfair job opportunities? So when you first come to Canada as a new immigrant, a lot of companies actually offer you, uh, you know, good salaries, good opportunities, but there are a lot many companies out there who do exploit this fact that you are new to Canada and you don't have a job. So of course they know that new immigrants are in desperate need of a job. And of course you must have heard about Canadian work experience. Canadian work experience is nothing apart from some soft skills. And of course, they do exploit this fact that you don't have Canadian work experience and they offer you lesser salaries because of that as well. Maybe you're working as a manager in your home country and you come with the expectations that you would find at least a job for a supervisor, if not manager, but you might end up actually working as an associate and or maybe an ex as an executive, but not as a manager or supervisor, because sometimes you don't get those job opportunities, uh, especially because the company sometimes exploit the fact that you are a new Canadian. So of course that is one fact. And apart from that as well, sometimes you might not even uh, get the job in your, in your core area where you have been working, for quite long in your home country. Maybe you need to switch your industry altogether uh, because you're not getting good jobs, uh, you know, in your old job, in your old occupation. So maybe when you join the new occupation, so of course there you will see some disadvantage of, uh, you know, joining a new industry or a new occupation where a lot of people who are experienced, but maybe of your age are getting much more salary than what you are getting. So those are the challenges you would definitely face while you are here in Canada. Uh, you would face that disparity in uh, the salaries. And of course, apart from that, sometimes you might face even a lot of challenges in finding 
the first job for yourself that's it guys that's it for this video if you like the video please click the thumbs up button if you have any questions any comments as i told you please put it down in the comment section below also if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet i request you to please click the subscribe button it's very important for any youtuber thanks a lot for watching this video